Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in this video we are going to learn about the basics of kinesio taping. In this video we will be covering the important steps and information that are needed to be considered before applying kinesio tape. So let's get started. Now kinesio tapes can be cut into different sizes as well as different forms and this totally depends upon the area that is required to be taped and the purpose for which kinesio taping is being applied. So the first important thing that is needed to be considered before application of the kinesio tape is thorough inspection of the skin over which the taping has to be applied. It should be kept in mind that the skin should be free of open wounds, lacerations, allergies or rashes. Also it should be noted that the skin should be free of excessive hairs. In case excessive hairs are present. Trimming or shaving is required so that the kinesio tape can have proper adherence to the skin. The skin should also remain free of any oil or lotion prior to application. It is important that the skin remains dry before applying kinesio tape and therefore the taping should also not be done immediately after the client or the patient has performed some heavy exercise that has resulted in sweating. So sufficient time should be given for the sweat to dry up before applying kinesio tape. Now after the skin has been thoroughly inspected, the target muscle and the overlying skin is next placed under tension or stretch by the physiotherapist. And now to decide what length of the kinesio tape has to be cut, the therapist next places the tape over the target region and then cuts 80% of the total length. So till now the therapist has not yet removed the paper backing from the kinesio tape. Now let's say the length of the area that was required to be taped was 12 inches. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 boxes. This is 2 inch per box so this becomes a 12 inch kinesio tape. So in order to cut 80% length I am going to cut it for 5 boxes. Now here we have cut a 10 inch length of kinesio tape and this particular form of kinesio tape is also referred to as an eye strip. Eye strip are most commonly used by physiotherapists to either provide support to an injured muscle or for pain relief purposes. Now the next important step before applying kinesio tape is to round off the edges or the corners of the tape. Now this ensures that the corner does not come off and the tape can remain adhered to the skin for longer period of time. After the edges of the kinesio tape have been rounded off, now depending on what type of application the therapist chooses, the paper backing is torn accordingly. So the two most common type of applications are center first application and end to end application. Now for the end to end application, the paper backing is torn from one end and that is the first box is used as the anchor point after which the remaining of the tape is applied over the affected region. The second type of application is known as the center first application and for center first application normally a smaller eye strip is used and this time the paper backing is torn exactly from the center of the kinesio tape strip. Now after the paper backing has been torn from the center, the paper is rolled backwards and it is then held from the two edges of the eye strip by the thumb and the index finger of the therapist. The center part of the tape is next stretched to the desired length and then it is applied over the painful area. Now next important point that is needed to be considered is the way in which kinesio tape is applied over the target muscle and this again depends upon the goal of kinesio taping. If the goal is to relax a particular muscle then the tape is applied from the insertion to the origin and if the goal is to facilitate a muscle then the tape is applied from origin to insertion. Now this concept of taping a muscle from origin to insertion and insertion to origin is not yet completely proven but still it cannot be denied as well and therefore it becomes interesting to follow this particular concept and the way it can be easily remembered is the direction in which the kinesio tape recoils back after its application. If the kinesio tape recoils back 
in the direction of muscle contraction then it is going to facilitate a muscle if the kinesotape is recoiling back opposite to the direction of muscle contraction then it is going to relax or inhibit the particular muscle now it is also important to note the stretch with which the kinesio tape is applied to either facilitate a muscle or inhibit or relax a muscle now if the tape is applied with a moderate intensity stretch then it is going to support and facilitate a muscle action on the other hand if the kinesio tape is applied with minimal or no stretch over the muscle from insertion to origin then it is going to help in relaxing the muscle now the four commonest type of kinesio tape strips that are used for taping purposes are the eye strip eye strip is utilized for stabilization purposes for providing support to an injured muscle and for pain relief the next strip is the y strip Y strip taping is used to support a recovering muscle after an injury and it is applied in such a manner so that both the tails of the Y strip surrounds the muscle from both ends. The next type of tape is the X strip kinesio tape. The X strip kinesio tape are utilized for those muscles which have broad attachments or are two joint muscles. And the fourth type of kinesio tape strip is known as the fork strip. Fork strips are used for edema reduction as it helps in lymphatic drainage. The anchor point of the fork strip is first applied over the lymphatic duct followed by the application of its tail. The other less commonly used kinesio tape strips are the web strip and the donut strip. Now the next important point to be discussed is the intensity of kinesio tape stretch that is used during the application and depending upon the intensity of stretch it can be further divided into mild stretch into moderate severe and 100% stretch. Now mild stretch can also be considered as the paper backing stretch that is the kinesio tape is manufactured in such a manner so that it is 10 to 15 percent pre-stretched during its application on the paper backing. So during the application if the physiotherapist does not add further tension to the tape apart from that 10 to 15 percent which is already present then it is known as mild stretch. This form of kinesio taping application with mild stretch is mainly used for conditions in which the goal is either to relax a muscle or for lymphatic drainage. Moderate to severe stretch during the application of kinesio tape is used mainly in conditions where the goal is either to support a muscle or a joint to improve the stability or alignment of a particular part or for providing pain relief. Next important point to be considered during the kinesio taping application is that the anchor point of the tape should be first properly adhered to the skin and to ensure this the therapist first should rub and create friction and heat over the anchor point before applying tension to the remaining of the kinesio tape. The tape must always be applied with no tension at both the anchor points that is the topmost square and the bottommost square should remain tension free during the application of kinesio tape. Once the whole length of the tape has been applied it should be again thoroughly rubbed to create friction and heat in order to activate the kinesio tape clue. It should also be kept in mind that the client or the patient must be advised not to perform any kind of exercise immediately after kinesio taping as it takes at least 20 minutes for the kinesio tape to get properly adhered to the skin so that it can remain there for at least four to five days. Now the last point to be discussed in this video is the important points to be considered during kinesio tape removal. Now it has to be kept in mind that the tape can come off easily when wet. Patient can also be advised to apply oil locally over the tape as it helps in the breaking down of the glue adhesions. Now the tape should always be removed in the direction of the hairline that is always from the proximal to distal direction and while removing the tape it should be noted that the skin should be moved away from the tape rather than the tape being moved away from the skin. Also grip and rip practice must never be used during the removal of kinesio tape as it can result in skin breakdown or inflammation. 
So this was all about the important information that I wanted to share regarding the basics of Kinesio tape application. I sincerely hope that the information is going to be helpful especially for the physiotherapy students. In our upcoming video it is all going to be practical for the Kinesio taping application in variety of conditions. So see you all in our next part till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected.